Hello everyone, today I'm just going to do a quick study of one of these gorillas uh, just to practice a different skeletal structure that I'm not totally familiar with and uh, we'll just kind of learn and uh, see what kind of decisions I make because as you can see here there's a few different uh, gorillas that I'm using as reference. And every gorilla is different in quite a few ways. So right now symmetry's on uh, the middle so just be using that. I don't really care that I'm starting with the skew but I'm going to eventually just kind of smooth things out and you know move things in the right place. Um, but, you know, just having, yeah, so right now just getting the overall shape. And, uh, yeah, let's use the clay strips. I think this is, like, the, the best way for having a controlled, um, just gradually adding mass. It's just, yeah, best way, my favorite way, uh, yeah, I guess, it's all my opinion. But, um, yeah, you can see, like, compared to the, this draw brush, it's a lot more gradual which feels more natural. And it doesn't smooth things out like the, the clay brush. But yeah, here, just to focus on this, I'm just, um, yeah, I'm just getting the, I, I, I want to take inspiration actually from uh, kind of these, you notice there's like different expressions going on and this face is quite a bit longer than these. And I'm kind of interested by that because um, when I think of a gorilla, I think of kind of like a rounder face um, and kind of angry. This is pr pretty much what I think of, but I want to sort of capture um, yeah, more sort of uh, gentle uh, expression, sort of longer, you know, I, th I think also seems kind of more gentle uh, because it's like, um, you know, you know, not as muscular or, I mean, yeah, maybe it is, but it's just like the overall shape kind of gives that, that impression when it's longer. It's, uh, you know, when you're length, I mean, you could be really tall and really muscular, but it's like uh, the... Uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Just kind of going through with this. Let's see. Um, turn this out. Um, you can see, like, you know, it's it's not the easiest for me to talk while sculpting, but, um, you know, try my best. And then just, I want this to be, you know, one take, so you can see me ad attacking this subject for the first time. So, um Right here, just kind of getting an overall skull, and there's you know a lot of gray area here because the we're not so sure of the forms there. I and mean, it looks like the first fairly slim we see a little bit of skin peeking through there, a little uh, patch. Um, so we can kind of follow it, but it's a little bit thinner than it's going to appear because we might uh, do that with uh, uh, do the hair with a particle simulation later on. Let's uh, let's correct this area. So I'm going to mask this out. And if I invert that, I can just adjust that layer right there. So let's bring that out there. Um, and then right here, this is the last bit I'm going to care about because we're just we're, uh, focusing on the head in, in this video. So yeah, we'll bring that back there. Um, and uh, use grab brush. Contr if I hold the use the grab brush to hold control, it moves it out along normals instead of just being relative to my view. Uh, which is pretty handy. Um, yeah, so right here, let's, let's kind of block in some nostrils. So I'm going to again use the masking tool because I just want a sharp uh, thing. And I don't need to bring them in too much for the sake of uh, this tutorial. I, um, nobody's going to see in there anyway, so that's kind of like, you know, the more the deeper you go in there, the more you're using geometry that's not going to get seen. And um, you know, with the remesh tool, it might get sealed off accidentally. Gonna go higher in geometry with Shift R and then Control R to remesh that. So Shift R controls the size, Control R um, remeshes it. And yeah, so I'm just uh, yeah, sort of refine the details on the nostril and um, yeah, giving the giving this part in the front. Just, yeah. Uh, it, it <laughs> It's not that interesting when I just say exactly what I'm doing. So, but yeah, just refining those features there. Um, that upper lip. Just, this continues and then it kind of stoops down. So that's kind of how I'm trying to understand it. Uh, because with these larger features, you kind of have to um, think, you know, okay, we, I am have this nostril here and I can just dip down over there. Um, so like the, the ang this is how the angle continues there. Let's try to copy that. Um, you know, I remember, 
I guess this, I don't know why I th thought of this, but like when I, I was watching like the special features of Inception and they were talking about like the, there's a scene where there's like a rotating hallway and just, uh, just Gordon Levitt had to be like on set. There was, it was kind of like this uh, sort of fight scene and, um, and uh, he was like, you know, I, I just had to sort of tell myself that whatever was below me was the floor, you know. It's like, drawing can be kind of like that because you're kind of, you know, you're literally rotating around it. And you just, you're constantly kind of forgetting where you are. So it's kind of important to remind yourself, um, you know, what, uh, what your target is. Right here, you know, I, I was taking uh, from that nostril. Let's, let's actually kind of narrow this out now that I look at these eyes. These are, this is my target here, not the other ones. Even though, like, you know, I think... Yeah, you want to be careful about that if you're using a lot of different references. It's really different because then you're basically kind of muddying, you're oversaturating it with uh, variation, which can be, look really interesting, especially if you're going for something more stylized, but uh, you might lose focus on uh, what you want to be doing. And yeah, so it's all, it's all about that balance. It's really up to you as an artist uh, what that reference is. But yeah, some reference can be misleading. Like, you could say this is a neutral expression, it could be a slightly sad expression, though. Um, you know, what you might identify as neutral, or, um, you know, and, um, yeah. Uh, so when, you know, when people make, like, a neutral pose, there's still, um, there's still some bias, you know, what they always say about, like, journalism or whatever, that everything's biased. This is, the same's gonna be true for what, what you think, like, um, an authentic expression is here, you know, I'm going in this, you know, I'm a, I'm a human, and I'm, I'm looking at this and thinking, okay, you know, in the context of what a human is, um, what this should look like, I kind of have to get, get rid of that, even though we are related, and similar in a lot of ways, um, you know, I think, you know, it could be a misconception that, like, you know, cats, they're not all that friendly, or, 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 um, or, like, they care about the same things that we do, or, you know, be, people like to project on their pets, is what I'm trying to say. So we have a nice slope, and the key, I think an optimist thing, if you're just using reference from front and side, is the quarter view. Uh, so you, you want some, so like right here, we can see that cheek. Uh, kind of goes out there, and then we, you know, we don't have a side view of this because I kind of just pulled these off of Google Images, but um, we can sort of, you know, make that cheekbone more prominent, bring it down a little, and I'm adjusting it over here, you know, because that's an easier read than here on the curvature. Um, this is the area that's constant. I think is very hard to maintain, you know, compared to the other views. So, um, oh yeah, oh, and a huge character of is this uh, protruding brow and so let's kind of bring that out a bit you can see like even on here the um, his brow well it, it kind of goes out of the difference between the eyes is less than what it is up here um, there's like a bump here um, yeah maybe we should have used some like skull reference to get a better idea of what this looks like I could, you know, if <laughs> there's a lot of fur, especially, um, it's a way of getting images without the fur kind of misguiding the form. But usually it's it's a clean contour over it, just the, the thickness in different areas can be a little misleading, uh, elusive, yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm liking this so far. Um, when you're working on these eyes, I think, let's save this real quick so I don't lose all this. Um, but um, let's just quickly use the UV sphere, rotate it 90 degrees, bring it in. So I switched to object mode, uh, just the tab key. It's a fast way of doing that. And I'm going to assume it's the same proportions for a human where a human's head is five eyes wide. I mean, their heads are pretty big, so I mean, if the eye ends here, it's about right. I think I'd say it's a little bit smaller, like, uh, like that. Let's bring that in there. Um, and then... I could just copy one over and then you know, give it, uh, but let's just use a mirror modifier in case I decide to move this around. And this is just for reference, so 
I'll put some real eyes in later that would behave properly or you know this is just a study but you know if I if I want to return back to this if, if I turn out to be really liking it you know um, and uh, it is nice to have some finished projects to go to for sure um, yeah okay yeah I should zoom in and just focus on this a bit because there's a lot we could adjust with these proportions um, so I'm gonna bring that in and um, bring this down and so if it's yeah there's some adjusting kind of you know I'll have to re-sculpt some areas because I'm kind of stretching it out but that that was inevitable because you know we still haven't gone in with all details and stuff but um, yeah might have added a little bit more time that will have to involve in this you know by not getting those forms just right in the beginning you know which pretty much just happened from using that the different reference so if I sculpt there there's kind of this mass that goes down there let's try to recreate that um, yeah and there's some interest and there's a lot of character that comes with the asymmetry I'm not ready to commit to asymmetry though because uh, you know I just want still working on the overall form you know right I just just kind of corrected some of it and I could still be very wrong yeah and that's important as an artist and as a person to you know accept that a lot of times you're probably you're probably wrong about a lot of things or there's a lot of things you don't know and it's okay to have an opinion about things and take a stance and be like yes put this you know putting a stroke down and not you know and being okay with being corrected uh, yeah, being comfortable with being corrected and having to correct yourself, you know, is, yeah, really important for sculpting and being a person. Um, not that I'm an authority on being a person or, um, well, yeah, very much with sculpting, but it's like I can sculpt, so I can say things about sculpting, and um, I can talk, so I can say things, you know, free speech, but, um, you know. Either way, I have the ability to be corrected. Please leave a comment uh, down below to, to correct me on uh, what I should be doing, uh, you know, what I'm doing wrong. Like, for example, these eyes are still too wide apart. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna move this in, and fortunately, I, in object mode, I use the mirror modifier, so I can just uh, bring these in there to sort of match with that, and um, let's see. Yeah, let's bring this this up quite a bit. Um, and I feel like this isn't very smooth, and a lot of people like to like establish the planes of the face, like uh, you know, having uh, flat faces so that you can read better what's going on. But um, in the case of this sculpt, I think you know, I I like to sort of polish it later and just sort of keep in mind. Um, no matter, even if I had a flat plane, the, the overall face of that would be kind of vague. So, um, I don't, you know, I think I would just add more time polishing something that's going to be polished later. Um, you know, this is a sketch. I'm trying to understand the form. Um, you know, if I, yeah, but yeah, in traditional sculpting, I might be more into establishing those forms and it does like prevent you from uh, creating mistakes later, which is valuable. So it's you know it's about what your goal as an artist is. If you just want to feel the thing, don't um, you you know get a get a good feel for the forms. Maybe don't worry about how polished it looks, you know, in the beginning. But make sure you can understand what you're putting down. I mean, and I mean, yeah. Sometimes you just it's not that's not really possible. If you're a beginner in three navigating a 3D space, uh, you, you might not be able to tell, but um, yeah, uh, yeah. So what's the advice there? <laughs> Did I, um, yeah, just give uh, yeah, do your best to to understand your forms. And if you can't understand this, the more you do it, the better you'll just get a feel for it. I don't think that's gonna c come just from like you know using the scrape tool and like, you know, flattening faces so you can read them better, you know, so, um, yeah. um, yeah, so, so 
so it's kind of just eyes. It's very important <laughs> to get those right. Um, if I hold on control and bring this in, get something a little nicer. There's kind of like the skin that sort of hangs a little bit there. Let's get that. right here I'm trying to understand what what this lump is right there let's look at another picture yeah he doesn't quite or she doesn't quite have that um, they they don't have that so yeah. oh so there's a thing that runs down there that one this one is very um, it's a bone you know from the, the bridge it's not like a vein or <laughs> um, this is what happens when you, you're not familiar with anatomy, and that's okay. You know, it's okay to just kind of learn things and do things. Um, you know, try to create, try to sculpt something that you don't fully understand, and then you can really compare it later. Basically, like trace it, bring it into here, and then uh, line things up or whatever. And then be like, oh wow, yeah, I was really off. And then you're gonna learn, and then you'll be more right later, and you can enjoy being more right. Remesh, so it kind of smoothed it out a bit, so we're, we kind of lost some detail. You saw that when I remeshed it, so you can't unfortunately have to uh, go to a smaller um, a detail. I don't want to, I kind of want like twice the amount of detail, so um, you could do a divide by two. We currently have 545 verts, that's to keep in mind. I don't like to go over uh, a million, like on these streams, because they could get pretty slow. And then, like, you're just watching me wait for it to, to remesh. Which, you know, it'll only take a few seconds, but, like, you know, I guess I don't like awkward pauses. You might be able to tell that from my nonstop talking in this. Just, like, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to give you guys good information, but, um, yeah. Sometimes it's nice to take a pause to, to think about things. And then you'll come out saying something more thought through, eloquent. Um, yeah, draw a sharp brush, and more of that texture. Um, we probably don't want to start, you know, blocking wrinkles just yet, because we're still, <laughs> how long has it been for this form? Um, yeah, um, and then, uh, yeah, let's, uh, and there's like these folds around it, so that's very interesting. Um, And then I'm probably not gonna I'm not gonna bother with the ears uh, in this video. Oh no, let me check the time. Okay, 18 minutes. Yeah, let's. Uh, okay, let's do the ears. It's been 20 minutes, so I'm gonna make this a 30 minute. Let's go for that. So um, that's a mess here. I'm gonna use inflate. That's gonna push it out in all the directions. Uh, which is kind of handy for you know, giving it that mass, that that kind of roundness that I'm going for there. Mass that out, and right here, convert that, you can inflate that area. I'm going to remesh it, that's going to remove the mask and also clean up that geometry that I have right there. Okay, yeah, so it's taking a little bit of time to load right there, so getting a lot. Okay, 2 million verts. Okay, um, well, I said I wasn't okay with million, I guess it's not so bad. Remesh is nice for that because I'm like down on top, but we can handle a lot more geometry. Um, yeah, and then let's just yeah, add some mass there. That's probably too much, so let's take it down, flatten it out. Um, and, yeah, bring that in, and then let's use, draw a sharp right here. And then, yeah, 
So now I'm kind of blocking in details. And, but yeah, before I do that, let's do the last uh, established form, and that's going to be the ear here. So we want to get good placement on that. So let's, I'm just going to use this for reference. No, it's a very different grill. It's not the best practice to, you know, but this is just a study. So, hey, um, let's think about where it's going to, the smallest point of the ear where it comes in context with the, the head. So, in my own ear. So it's kind of long, it kind of, you know, then there's a hole in there too. Um, oh yeah, so where there's going to be a hole, I'll remove the mask. So control, uh, we'll remove the mask when I draw, if I hold down control. And yeah, let's invert that and use snake hook to pull it out. It's a little stronger than the grab brush. Um, yeah, let's keep this mask going in for as long as we can. So bring that down, bring it out. Um, And then, yeah, and then it's, yeah, it's tricky getting like behind the ear here. So I might do that, uh, you know, at the very end of this mask. So I'm gonna adjust the overall shape and then get behind it there. Um, yeah, if you just snake hook, let's just bring this down in more detail. And so there's going to be like an eight. It's going to be angled outward a bit. So let's try to try our best to do that <laughs> right there. And um, let's see. Maybe I can just get away with using draw sharp to bring that in. So okay. Yeah, we're running out of geometry there a bit. Let's see what we can do to get. It. A little more shape. Control R, remesh, and uh, yeah. So it's looking pretty wobbly, but let's and let's try to clean that up a bit. It's been a little sloppy, just kind of blocking in forms. But yeah, let's clean it up. So there's kind of that sharp. This is the most prominent thing going on right here. Um, if look at that. It's just a slope. Um, and then from this angle, like it's, it kind of goes in there, there's kind of that occlusion, as you can tell. Um, goes in there. Um, you could also like sculpt the ear as a separate object and then join it, which uh, is a uh, you know, totally great approach you might prefer. Um, I was made decisions kind of quickly, you know, being a recording and all. So. Kind of more of a cheap one on this guy. Maybe it's different from this one. But, hmm. Yeah, you use that cheap bone. One more down here. Um, and then let's bring that in. And then this should be flat right there. So actually, let's use fill. Just flatten it out, and you know, basically, you know, floods the area. It's kind of that equivalent of that kind of effect. Um, just draw that in there, and then draw a sharp right there, and right there. Yeah, I was thinking of doing a like a series on like endangered animals or something, just to kind of give them, a, you know, some attention or something. That would be, um, yeah. So maybe I'll put like a link to like where you can donate for endangered animals or something in the description or, yeah. Um, here, yeah, I'll do that, not a bad idea. So maybe I'll do more stuff like this, but yeah. Pretty busy now, holiday season, so, and uh, you know, other background work so it's uh it's gonna yeah
yeah, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, definitely do do more studies of animals. It's really interesting to, um, yeah, just all all nature. There's there's so much to learn. There's yeah, so much beauty. I love Planet Earth. I mean the, not not just the plant, but like the the TV show. You know, where they talk about all that that beauty, right? Um, yeah, it's like I love this, and then there's the ear, <laughs> which uh, needs some work. And I, I think I have to wrap this up pretty soon. Yeah, I think it's got about four minutes. So uh, let's let's bring this in right here. And um, if I just look at it from further away, we can see um, how well we have this. Well, this the top for one thing should be taller. I think. Yep. It's like, it's kind of insulting that, like, I don't understand the shape of their skull. Like, can you imagine, like, a gorilla watching this and being like, that looks so wrong. Like, that's just, <laughs> we don't look like that, you know. But I think there's, like, a muscle here. We don't have that. We have, well, yeah, we kind of do. It's a heavy, it's a heavy skull, so I guess maybe that's why it's so, so big there, but that muscle. We have those neck muscles on either side that kind of stabilize that. And then we have a little bump there. I imagine they would too. But yeah, ours is little, so I mean, it, yeah, doesn't seem make sense to me. Um, and then, oh, I actually leaves scale. They changed S to scale instead of smooth, but like the controls don't totally make perfect sense for scale at the moment, so much. I guess it's more consistent with the rest of Blender. That's probably why they did it, but um, not very useful for sculpting. I mean, yeah, we'll see. Um, there's this kind of bump right here. Um, I'm thinking my own skull and sort of like, how would that be different uh, for a gorilla? Um, so it's like, you know, I'll be off if I only think about my own skull, but it's like, uh, good to look for those things, at least, and think about how that might might be different. Um, is this uh, no, nah, it's now it's too much. <laughs> okay, so let's bring that down, and um, maybe we can quickly just you know, block in details. So this this. I think at this stage, if I'm happy with where most things are, this is where I can uh, break symmetry. Um, you can break symmetry at any time, really, um, and then you could always make it symmetrical later. Uh, but like for smaller details that you want to be symmetrical, you're gonna have to turn that off. Um, you know, and that's really clear, like especially in the middle, like these lines across the other side. So I'm gonna start with, excuse me, I'm gonna start with that, so you can see. Um, just kind of blocking in wrinkles, just the larger ones, uh, and then I'll, you know, you, you go, you start big, you go smaller, and then you get smaller, and then you get smaller again, and then, and that's, those are all the steps to, to sculpting, really. Like, you know, good thing you watched the end of this video, so you had that tip. Um, if you hadn't figured that out by now. Um, but yeah, so, I'm just gonna... Adding these lines. And yeah, these are pretty small details. They don't need to go that much. Um, don't get small too quickly. Um, and then these scratches. Think about like the curvature of this. If that's is that totally on par with what they have there? Not totally sure. So, but keep questioning it, right? Um, and then. But it's okay that I'm, you know, adjusting this and it's still, um, it's vaguely symmetrical and that's what we want. And it's okay to do that twice because it's worth the trade of making it seem more natural. Um, and that's an issue that's hard to resolve. If, if you have, if you want to be like totally as non-destructive as possible, you know, s you know, removing as many steps by using, uh, different fe certain features and modifiers, you will probably lose uh, like uh, naturalness 
too with the appearance. So yeah, um, should be wrapping it up. So let's just let's just get this one and. Accentuate these details, spending a lot the last few moments on that. If I use this up here, there's kind of like a fold where it goes inwards. Yeah, in this area, maybe I won't. I can just quickly polish. I'm going to use the scrape brush, it kind of flattens it, makes it uh, more of a surface, but um, whatever. Now hold on shift to smooth as well. Um, so a combination of the two I think is valid. And then I might, you know, I could use the clay brush so when I sculpt over it it's nice and smooth. But I typically prefer not, prefer the clay strips brush. As I've mentioned, just because it's, the change is more obvious. Because it's not smoothing while painting. Oh yeah, and now I have to do this other side, caveat of symmetry. Maybe I, I could have just turned symmetry on again because I hadn't really ch changed much there, so everything would have lined up. Um, yeah, this blender lets you do that. But and this this ridge continues. Yeah, and this that area will be covered in fur, so we don't need to do too much there. Now we, you know, create more mass over there. So we always need to keep in mind if we're making big changes like that. So again, like, yeah, you should wait until all your forms are in place before you um, break symmetry. But yeah, this is a quick sculpting video, so you're kind of seeing the effects of that. Um, and let's put that in there. Um, am I happy with this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, it's good. It's just <laughs> I could do more, but um, yeah, I think this is enough for this video. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, hope you liked what I what I had to share. Um, yeah, and you can comment, like, subscribe. Uh, you know, drill. Um, yeah, just want to keep people in the loop. You know, it's great to to reach out as as many people as uh, as possible. You know, so. Um, Okay, okay, just one more thing. Let's just, let's just uh, create some asymm just some symmetry in the eyes. More natural. Okay, that's too much. <laughs> oh boy. Gotten sucked into it again. Okay, thank you. Please comment, like, and subscribe.